With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome to the Exploring More podcast. This week we have an excerpt from the Deepening Weekend 2021. Michael Thompson shares on the topic of glory. So in this session, you've heard it said that it's not about you. It's all about you. I know there's a guy who sold millions of books with the first line in Purpose Driven Life, it's not about you. He's not wrong, but he's not all right. The other side of the coin is it's all about you. He leaves the right hand of the Father to come for you. What's eBay taught us the value of anything? What somebody's willing to pay? Ransom. You've been ransomed, brought from the kingdom of darkness. And I'm not just talking about salvation. If you think we've been talking about salvation, then you need to get the audio package of this. We're talking about your identity. Yes, salvation brings you out of darkness But somehow in the trailer and in the trunk, that maybe that big trunk that I grew up with that, you know, you could hide bodies in back in the 70s, those big trunks, right in the trunk of my transition from darkness to life, from the evil to the good, there's some things that kind of came in the trunk. That's what we've been talking about, identities and namings and woundings and vows and agreements and all of that, that somehow came into the kingdom with me. And so the sanctification process, you know that term sanctification? That simply means becoming like Jesus. You are little Christs. I don't know how C.S. Lewis got away with teaching all that stuff about who you are, how grand, how important, how significant you are. It's about you and the Trinity DNA that's in you that you are to bring to the world but you have to get who you are first before you can answer the second question. Now, Jesus, why am I here? Why am I here? And that's what we want to do in this session is begin to explore that. Because if the greatest commandment is to to be in love with him and in love with others, there's something about your goodness, your good heart, your glory that we're going to talk about. Small g, Trinity right? DNA that's in us. We have, we have a glory and we want to explore that. I want to introduce you to a story about a boy and a girl and several others and the impact and the effect of their lives. So let me introduce you to Hugo. What's your name, boy? Hugo. Hugo Cabray. A memory from his past. Who built him? I would think a magician. The most complicated one I've ever seen. Can we fix him? Of course we can fix him. (laughs) A mysterious connection. Hey, where did you get this? I need it to fix something. This is marvelous. A secret. What is that? I think it's a message from my father. Why would my key fit into your father's machine? To finding his way home. This is a treacherous place. Do you understand? Watch your step. We could get into trouble. That's how you know it's an adventure. You've tried to forget the past for so long. Maybe it's time to try and remember. The story's not over yet. This Thanksgiving, Academy Award-winning director Martin Scorsese invites you on an incredible journey. Stop that child! Abraham! Once upon a time, I met a boy named Hugo Cabray. He searched to find a secret message. I need to know what this means. And how that message lit his way. All the way home. Hugo.
What did you hear? What did you hear that was true? What stirred your heart in that trailer? What phrases? To find, we're all trying to find our way home, right? He is our home. An adventure, right? And that's how you know it's an adventure. It's going to get us into some trouble. Oh, it can be trouble leaving your old theology behind. It can be risky. And coming into the new, we're going to talk some more about that. What else? What kind of place is it? A treacherous, this is a treacherous place, right? There's secrets, there's unlocking mystery. Oh, how about the earlier where it's a message? I think there's a message from my father. Hugo's an orphan, and you'll get to know his story as we move through this session. It's a question about who you are, and then it's a question about purpose. Why am I here? Discover hope, courage, and destiny. Hope, courage, and destiny. We, we keep repeating, whether it's galaxies far, far away or it's the hundred acre wood, we keep telling ourselves the same stories with the same important ingredients that stir our hearts. We need to grow and learn what it is to, to discern. As your hearts come alive, you're going to feel more. It reminds me of the Grinch, right? Did you see Jim Carrey's Grinch? Oh! You know, as his heart expands, this feeling, you'll feel more, you'll see more, and you'll need to, to decode some of this mystery. They talk about fixing, we would need to translate into healing, right? God's not trying to fix us, but you'll hear that through some of the story about Hugo and what he is meant for. George MacDonald said, foolish is the man and woman. And there are many such men and women who would set the world aright by waging war on the evils around them while they neglect the integral part of the world where lies his business, his first business, namely his own character and conduct, right? His calling. Dan Allender said, story does not give you answers, but it does give you perspective, right? Story does not give you answers, but it does give you perspective. And Gary Barkalo which much of this is from our friend Gary Barkalo, who's been a mentor and friend of mine for years. In his book, It's Your Call, he said, don't confuse mystery with disorientation. Mystery is an invitation to intimacy with God. Do you want to solve God or do you want to enjoy him? Thoreau said, most men live lives of quiet desperation and go to their graves with a song still in them. This session, we want to talk about your song. What is yours and yours alone to bring to the world? How do you bear his image uniquely that he wanted one of you for such a time as this? Right? We've talked about wounding and wounders. We've talked about, I mean, there's father wounds. There's mother wounds. You heard Robin's story. Right? We, see, we see passive and we see aggressive characters in our stories, teachers, coaches. And you need to start seeing them in light of your glory. Because what the enemy is trying to do is have you live small and live less. The larger story doesn't make you small, sisters. It actually invites you to your bigness, to your significance, to your large part to play that only you can play. I can't sub in for you. Allie can't sub in for you. Stephanie can't sub in for you. There's a part that's for you and you alone. So what does it look like to walk with God to recover the glory of your life? You walk in healing, and that healing is training. That's how you will, and God will, together in partnership unveil to you the mystery and the glory of your life is walking with him to recover who you are in the kingdom and then why you're here. He wants to heal you through intimacy of your wounds and train you up into who you are. And then he wants to turn you loose. He wants to turn you loose. For definition's sake, let me say, this is what I mean by glory. This is what glory is, right? 
It's the effect of your life. That's your glory. It's the splendor of your life. It's what's on display, right? All these beautiful flowers, right? A garden has a glory to it, right? A 98-mile-an-hour fastball has a glory to it. A half-court shot, a, a, a beautiful painting, Jenny, has a glory to it. It's the splendor. It's what's on display. It's the weightiness of you. It's how you uniquely bear his image. Hugo is an orphan in the 30s, and he's on a journey to recover something. He has suffered. He lives up in this shop, up above this train station. He's literally sneaking in there. That's where he and his dad spent many, many hours. Um, His dad was an inventor. His dad was a genius, and especially with machines. So you're going to kind of hear that theme. Lewis calls us the human machines in which God is the fuel for us to run on. And so what I love about this film, it is a great adventure. It's an exploration. It's a boy and a girl in a team walking in mystery and how they affect one another and how they affect others around them. And not everybody they affect likes them. If you're going to become like Jesus, you're just going to have to understand in the margin somewhere, not everybody liked him. But the effect of his life, you cannot deny. It's the impact, the glory of your life, the impact, the effect. So we're going to jump in back to the story of Hugo, show you a couple clips as these two are beginning to come together as a team and and understand something larger that they're after. Monsieur Le Beast gave me a book the other night. He's always doing that. Sending books to a good home. That's what he calls it. He's got real... Purpose. What do you mean? Everything has a purpose. Even machines. Clocks tell the time and trains take you places. They do what they're meant to do. Like Monsieur Le Beast. Maybe that's why broken machines make me so sad. They can't do what they're meant to do. Maybe it's the same with people. If you lose your purpose, it's like you're broken. Like Papa George. Maybe we can fix him. Is that your purpose? Fixing things? I don't know. It's what my father did. I wonder what my purpose is. I don't know. Maybe if I had known my parents, I would know. Come with me. Right after my father died, I would come up here a lot. I'd imagine the whole world was one big machine. Machines never come with any extra parts, you know. They always come with the exact amount they need. So I figured if the entire world was one big machine, I couldn't be an extra part. I had to be here for some reason. you have to be here for some reason too. Get back. I'll bring to bar tomorrow night at seven. Don't say anything. 
But are you sure about this? Not really. But I think it's the only way to... to fix him. Oh, we're getting in some trouble. What did you hear? Yes, that's good to know. I can't be random. I can't be extra. I must be here for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, do you see why the cart has to be behind the horse, though? And even in this pursuit, the identity is coming. It's so good. Such a good observation. What else? Yeah, so good. Just let me say, it's, it's on page seven of the notes. Well, I'm not there yet. I'm on page two. But you need, you need others for this. You need others to, to, to call out, to bring forth your glory. And it is a trial and error experiment. And I'll talk about that again in a few minutes. But yes, is this going to work? Are you, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think so. Let's go see, right? It's not certainty. It's mystery. And don't you want a God that is more mysterious than figured out? Gosh, if he fits in my box, do I really need him? Psalm 8, 4 and 5. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of earthborn man that you care for him? Yet you have made him but a little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. It seems like we have received a message for a lot of our lives through religious circles, not all churches, but in, in the religious, you need to understand that there's a religious spirit that roams the, the world, and it's huge. It's significant. It's not something that we're going to get to overthrow. You're not going to say you shall not pass. The religious spirit is something Jesus is going to take care of. But you don't have to live under it. You shouldn't live under it. But it's that part of life that's about obedience. And there's a time when you're little in the faith, it's, it, you should obey because he said so. It, life will go better for you if you keep the rules, if you obey, right? And we know this as parents with our littles. But so much of parenting, and we're going to get to that tomorrow, is really about teaching them how to make decisions, not deciding for them. They have a free will too, right? And so this idea of religiosity, what has come with that is this. This is my point, that when you know when you're still under some of that or a lot of that, when you say things like, well, God's using you, or I just want God to use me. Do you use your kids? Do you use your spouse? We kind of need to graduate from being used by God. That's an old covenant idea. I call you my friends. No longer my servants. I call you my friends. I want to partner with you, Jesus says, to bring the kingdom. I want to partner with you and show you who you are in it and why you're here. I want us to stop using the word use. I'll tell you in a minute who uses you. So even if it's just this idea of, I don't want to bring that word over into kingdom sisters and kingdom brothers and kingdom life, because he's not trying to use you. He actually wants to partner with you. He wants to deploy you into missions. He wants to invite you into something large because he knows, he knows who you are. And so does the enemy. So we'll get back to using you. But strike that use thing from the vocabulary going forward. We do struggle interpreting. I'm so glad you brought that up, Sherry. I remember some years ago, I was with Dana's husband, Jeff, and, and, and we were on mission together. We were up on the Gauley River up in West Virginia doing a whitewater rafting trip with about 30, 35 guys. How Robin feels about camping, I kind of feel about whitewater rafting. Um, but I'm, I'm better with it now. Here's what happened. So the first year we did this, Tom and Jim were with me, and we get in the rafts. I mean, we're doing teaching and sessions and stuff in this big house, and then we get to the water for this big, long free time to go down the river. So my experience, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. That's all I'll tell you for right now. So then Jeff invites me back the next year, and I'm like, I mean, I, I, love, I love to get to do this, 
but not this. So, but I say yes, because I, I have it in my mind, I'm going to tell him that I'm out for the whitewater raft thing. I'm just not going to do that. But I want to be invited along, so I say sure. So anyway, comes time to whitewater raft and uh, get in the bus. And I said, hey, Jeff, I'm just going to lay back and just kind of look over my talks and kind of get ready for these next sessions. And if you know Jeff, right, Mr. Airstream, no, bro, no, you can't do that. You've got to come with us. I'm like, Jeff, look, the last time I came, it didn't go well. Um, I, I was in the water a few times. I had this guy yelling at me, telling me, okay, this is dead man's curve. You guys, you, you guys better. I mean, he was just not very kind, my guide. And, um, and, and it just, and Jeff says this. He says, Michael, you don't hate whitewater rafting. You hate being yelled at. You hate being scared. And the cold water, Jeff. <laughs> he says, come with me. So I so reluctantly did. And then he introduces me to this guide that he knows. I don't know how. Jeff knows everybody. He knows this guide. And he purposely puts me and a couple of my friends with this woman. Now, she carried our raft from the rack to the water <laughs> by herself. <laughs> Not only was that impressive, she had a little different mechanism on the raft, and it was intriguing, but... All the way down the river, she called us her boys. She high-fived us. She came over to Jenny's husband, Jim, to pull him in the water, pull him out of the water because he had somehow fallen off. So she gets him, and she pulls him in right on top of herself. <laughs> Come here, sugar. <laughs> the other five of us were like, I don't know if I want that. Maybe I do. <laughs> I misinterpreted my life. I don't hate whitewater rafting. I hate being yelled at. I hate being made to be afraid. We didn't do the whitewater raft trip the next couple years, which I was grateful for, but we've gone on to other adventures. Hey, listeners, SJ here. Just wanted to let you know about an upcoming event we've got on the calendar for men it's called the Heart of a Warrior Encounter West. October 21st through the 24th, 2021 at Young Life's Trail West Camp in Buena Vista, Colorado. It is a beautiful camp, and if you've never been to Colorado, this is a great excuse to visit. That's October 21st through 24th, 2021, and if you want more information, visit zoe.org forward slash events. I hope to see you there. but we've gone on to other adventures. Do you understand how subtle we can miss? Depending on who's in charge of something, your glory may have been missed to different degrees because of how people have handled it. You may not be too much. You might be too much for them. You may not be enough for them. And yet, if you give their words, their lies, authority, and the enemy is using them to hurt you, then hurt you will be until some big woman comes along and yanks you out of the water. <laughs> Come here, sugar. <laughs> Romans 8, just look at it later, the beginning and the end of Romans 8. It says basically this, especially in the message. Romans 8, he became like us, sinful, so we could become like him. It's the greatest exchange program I've ever seen. And in becoming like him, that's where our glory is how we bear his image, what we're to bring to the world. Isaiah 61, Robin has introduced this to you, but this is, where, this is about our glory, right? Oaks of righteousness to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland or diadem of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a heavy burdened and a failing spirit that they may be called oaks of righteousness. Oh, you think you're little flowers? You're oaks of righteousness. Magnificent, distinguished, and right standing. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. You see, when we walk in our glory, he's glorified. Right? When people compliment your kids, 
yeah, we made that. <laughs> She's ours. And then, then later that night, this is your kid. This is, <laughs> right? God doesn't do that. C.S. Lewis says this, the place for which he designs them, human beings, is his scheme of things, is the place where they were made for. When they reach it, their nature is fulfilled and their happiness attained. A broken bone in the universe has been set and the anguish is over. When we want to be something other than the thing God wants us to be, we must be wanting what in fact will not make us happy. Those divine demands which sound to our natural ears most like those of a deposit and least like those of a lover, in fact, marshal us where we should want to go if we knew what we really wanted. Philippians 2.13 about desire. The enemy has long too held this, this word and this idea of desire because desire is associated with what? Sin. And yes, our desires can get us in trouble. Lewis talks about it in Mere Christianity, when we take them to less, when we take them to the counterfeits. It's Brent Curtis who taught us in the Sacred Romance this idea of less, less wild lovers, right? When I take, right, when I take my desires to another image bearer, that is more than Robin can bear. She can't answer my questions. Now, she can help. She can partner with God in some ways, but she can't be responsible to fully show and tell me who I am. If I do that to her, we'll both be broken down. We'll both be hurting. That neediness, the longing that we have to be loved has to be taken to the author of the story and who is love itself. We've talked about that. I just want to continue to bring some of these beautiful things forward so you see how important they are. Desire, desire. No, you actually have good desires right? For validation, for belonging, for significance, to be wanted, to be included. Those are good desires that God gave us. The challenge is, is where have I taken them? What am I relying on? What am I trusting to bring the answers to the core questions of my life, of my heart? Do you love me? And do you love what you see? Right? And then the questions come. After those questions are answered, here comes the, big, the, big, the next set of questions. Why am I here? Can I come through? What's my song to sing? Philippians 2, For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When you walk in your glory, right, that's freedom, because you know who you are, where you are, and the good that God's up to in your life. That produces shalom, a freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit ever-increasing glory. He's not trying to get you out of the way. He's trying to put you on display with ever-increasing glory. Now, ever-increasing glory means this is going to take a while. This is a process. This is a journey. You need to bring your desires with you, your longings and your hope. You don't check them at the door. You bring them with you. And all the woundings... And all the vows and the agreements, you bring those with you because there's a mystery to decode in those things. Oh, there's a reason why the enemy came at you the way he came at you. To hear the rest of Michael's talk on glory and the rest of the conference audio, go to zoeoutpost.com. Search for The Deepening Weekend 2021. We invite you to share, rate, and review this podcast on your platform of choice. You can reach out to the team with your stories at exploringmore at zoe.org. Thank you for listening. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us 
and the life of more by visiting Zoe on YouVersion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more.